Here is the organ that is seen in the laryngeal mirror. It is a framework of cartilages at the top of the trachea or windpipe. In it are structures which form a valve through which the breath passes. We should have a clear concept of these cartilages and muscles. This is a male larynx suspended from the hyoid bone and at the top of the section of the trachea. The most important cartilages are the thyroid, the cricoid, the two arytenoids, and the epiglottis. Let us build up a larynx part by part to study its structure and function. Here is a section of the trachea. It is composed of rings of cartilage which keep it open for the passage of air. However, it is flexible and distensible, and also the cartilaginous rings are incomplete at the back and are closed by muscular and membranous tissue. We shall place this section of the trachea on this spindle. This is the cricoid cartilage. It is the only cartilage in the larynx which is a complete ring closed at the back. It is shaped somewhat like a signet ring being smaller in front and having a large plate at the back. Its upper edge forms an oval. The cricoid is found at the top of the trachea. We have attached the cricoid cartilage to our spindle with two nails. Notice that there are four facets for the articulation of other cartilages. Two are concave. One, two. These are for the thyroid cartilage. Two are convex with oval outlines. One, two. These are for the arytenoid cartilages. This is the left arytenoid cartilage. It is roughly pyramidal in shape, having three projections. The one at the top is called the apex. The large blunt one at the side is called the muscular process, and we shall find that several muscles attach to it. The smaller, flexible, pointed one extending to the front is called the vocal process, because the vocal ligament and vocalis muscle attach to it. On the underside of the muscular process is a concave, almost cylindrical facet for articulation with the cricoid. Notice that it is here, under the muscular process. Let us put it in place. It has two possibilities of movement, which we shall call rocking and gliding. It is held in place flexibly by a ligamentous capsule, which is especially strong here. The ligament anchors the arytenoid to the cricoid plate here in the middle. Here is the rocking movement. There is also a gliding movement along the slope of the oval-shaped top of the cricoid. Of course, arytenoids come in pairs, so let us have the right one also in place. Now the two arytenoid cartilages are perched with the vocal processes pointing toward the front and their muscular processes fitting the convex facets on the curving upper edge of the cricoid plate. Ligaments hold them loosely and flexibly. Here are the muscles that move the arytenoids in various ways. The posterior cricoarytenoid muscles are these large ones which cover much of the cricoid plate. They are called posterior because they are at the back, and they are called cricoarytenoid because they arise from the cricoid and are inserted in the arytenoids. With attached threads, we can simulate the action of these muscles. We shall do the same with all the others as well. When the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles contract, 
they separate the arytenoids with a complex movement, largely rocking. Joining the arytenoid cartilages at the back are three interarytenoid muscles. On the surface are two small, inconspicuous muscles crossing each other to make a letter X. They are called the oblique arytenoid muscles. Beneath them, running from side to side, is a larger, much more powerful muscle called the transverse arytenoid muscle. When these muscles contract, they draw the arytenoids together. The lateral cricoarytenoid muscles can now be seen. They are called lateral because they are at the sides and cricoarytenoid because they arise from the cricoid here and extend along the upper edge of this cartilage to be inserted in the arytenoids. Notice that these muscles attach to the muscular processes of the arytenoid cartilages. When the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles contract, the muscular processes are drawn forward. This results in an interesting adjustment of the vocal processes, which we shall see better in another position. We shall look down on these parts in much the same direction as they are seen in a laryngeal mirror. We observe the movements of the arytenoids as each pair of muscles contracts and exerts its pull. The posterior cricoarytenoid muscles separate the arytenoids with a rocking motion and the interarytenoids draw them together again with a rocking and upward gliding movement so that the apexes meet. The lateral cricoarytenoid muscles do this, rocking and gliding. The gliding movement may have a rotating component around the upper or lower corners of the cricoid facet. We notice that the muscular processes are drawn forward and the vocal processes contact each other. When both the laterals and the interarytenoids contract, there is firm contact between the arytenoid cartilages like this. These movements will become more meaningful when we see the vocal folds in place. For this, we need a thyroid cartilage. Here is the thyroid cartilage. It has two wings fused at the front. The wings are fused only at the bottom and there is a notch above. They are open at the back and each wing has an upper horn and a lower horn. The lower horns articulate with facets on the cricoid cartilage. Now we have seen that the arytenoids are attached to the cricoid with a rocking and gliding articulation. This is also true of the cricothyroid articulation. The thyroid can rock with the point of 